So, as some of you may know, I recently got offered a full-time data analyst position at a startup. I wanted to make a video talking more about my journey and how I got here, but I want to add a disclaimer to this video as it's not meant to be anything other than educational. My hope for this video is to spread light and inspire others to be more resilient and keep going. I also want to mention that although I don't have an undergrad or master's degree, I'm currently in school pursuing one. Now with that out of the way, let's get into the main part of this video. So my story kind of starts at the end of 2022 when I started the process of looking for a summer internship for the year 2023. I began applying around mid-December 2022 and I scaled up my applications towards the end. I started hearing back from employers slowly at the end of December, but things really started picking up throughout January and early February. I went through over a dozen interviews and got a couple offers, but I decided to go with the startup. Throughout all these interviews, I asked various different questions, but I made sure to ask one specific question to each employer. I wanted to know if there was a possible of full-time employment after my internship. Most of them gave me vague yeses by saying something along the lines of, if you have the finances or if you prove yourself worthy, then we'll make it work. The startup, however, made the most sense to me because I believed regardless of how it ended, I would get the most experience. I was able to go through three rounds of interviews with them and I essentially met the whole data team. Just from first impressions and through my own research, I knew I was gonna learn a lot as all of them had very good reputations within their own domain. So that's exactly what I did. Throughout my internship, I decided to wear as many hats as possible and learn from various different individuals. I managed to pick up a lot of skills in the realm of data science, machine learning, data architecture, and also data engineering. I was very persistent on learning, especially the more difficult tasks, as the harder they were, the more valuable the skills. All that said, I believe the primary thing that got me a full-time offer was my capstone project. In my first two weeks, I scouted the company's problems and tried to find the biggest issue they were facing. I then spent the next few weeks brainstorming ideas for a possible solution. I worked with a lot of smart people and we made a ton of progress, and within a few weeks, they were very keen on bringing me on full-time. Fast forward a couple of weeks, I got a full-time offer to work there as a data analyst while completing my undergrad and also continuing with all my projects. I asked all my mentors and supervisors to try and understand what specifically earned me this offer and I believe it was a couple things. First, I was already equipped with many if not most of the skills of your typical data analyst. Aside from that, I was also very open to doing work outside the realm of data analytics such as data engineering tasks to help the team out. This involved me taking certifications in my free time and also involved me working closely with my mentor to do a lot of work with DBT. Lastly and most importantly, I had a background in both computer science and data science which came in handy for my capstone project, which to this day is one of the company's largest priorities. This project was definitely a key factor to my success here. It was designed to solve a large problem that the company was facing. I also did my best to limit the handholding and take the reins on the solution. Don't get me wrong, we had weekly check-ins and many sessions brainstorming solutions, but once I got direction, I was able to drive it home. Additionally, since I was the one coding the entire project, it was easier for them to just keep me on and allow me to follow through until the end. Now, obviously, it is easier to convert an internship to a full-time job than it is to actually land one with little experience. So if if you are in a similar position like I was, I would recommend you truly take the time to plan ahead. Maybe you're in your senior year and you're looking for a last internship before you graduate. I would definitely make sure to include full-time planning on your agenda when you're looking for companies. However, I do understand that not everyone has the opportunity to look for an internship first. So here's what I would do. If I were to start from scratch, I would definitely start early. By that, I mean start applying as soon as possible and as frequent as possible. Refine your resume as you go and make sure to run it through ATS scans like jobscan.co. Most people tend to overlook this step and majority of the time they get filtered out at the scan, so no employer or recruiter actually looks at the resume. Next, I'll also make sure to display projects on my portfolio that show essential skills that they are looking for. For example, if they have data visualization on the job description, I would have a project solely for that on my resume. If they ask for Python skills, I would display projects you've done in Python. If they have listed something like three plus years of SQL skills in data analytics, I would definitely include a comprehensive project or case study that utilizes all the various skills of data analytics, including data aggregation, data cleaning, data analysis, and also data visualization. I know it's easier said than done, but if you are actually serious about landing a job, I recommend you take a couple of weeks and do a lot of projects on websites like Kaggle or GitHub. Now, once you've done all that and you got yourself into the interview stage, I recommend you do a lot of research. Please do research on the company, the specific domain, the interviewer, and also the recruiter. You wanna be able to know them better than any other candidate. Try and also come up with creative and unique questions that make you stand out. I made a video talking about this, so if you want to check that out, I'll leave a link down below. I recommend utilizing websites like Glassdoor, Indeed, and LinkedIn when you do your research. You can probably find the recruiters or employers on these websites. You can come up with some creative questions based on the reviews or other interesting facts. I would also consider using AI like ChatGPT to come up with some questions that they may ask you. This allows you to better prepare so you can answer their questions more fluidly. I did this by copying the job description and using a structured query to get interview-like questions from ChatGPT. I would also definitely recommend preparing for technical interview questions with websites like datalemur.com. You also want to remember to be yourself and be respectful. This is probably the most important part because regardless of how good you are technically, if you're not a good fit, they probably won't hire you. I would also probably leverage the research you've done to try and gain a more personal connection with the employers. 
In conclusion, I think there were many things I did right, but also many things that I could have done better. But I do think the best approach is to be a problem solver. Data analysts and data scientists, they're essentially hired to solve problems with data. You don't have to be the best programmer or the most technical person out there. In fact, I believe I'm very average when it comes to my programming and technical ability. I think it's the soft skills that sells you. If you're able to show that you're a problem solver and a good communicator early on, I believe that'll give you a massive advantage. I also think most employers want to hire someone who's eager to learn. So try and make that impression throughout your interviews. I've also made several other videos on this topic. So feel free to check them out. I'll leave links down below. As you can tell, the field is constantly growing, so I'll continue to make videos on the topic. I'll definitely make a more comprehensive video breaking down all the steps and uh, strategies that I would take uh, if I was looking for a full-time job right now. But I do hope this video gave you some insights on how I became a data analyst in a short period of time. Of course, there was a lot more that went into the process. So if you guys have any questions or thoughts, feel free to leave them down below. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.